Hey, what's going on, man? How are you? How you doing? Oh, good, man. What are you up to? Not much, man. Just getting off. Yeah? Yeah. Awesome. Well, we are having a little party. We got some alcohol up in the house. Why don't you have a sip with me, brother? Come on. Oh, no, I couldn't. Come on, bro. You got to be with us, man. Come oh. on. It's a party. Just just have a glass. Come oh, on. No, I can't. Come on. You know you want it. No. You know you want it. It's so good. Oh, just the um, mm. So good. Oh, why not? Ah, uh, it's not really my thing. All right, man. Fuck you. I'm out of this house. Oh, whatever, man. Hello, all my PTSDs. It is I. Your host, Brandon Ascari, alongside with the other host, Eric Kelly. And welcome to another episode of Hashtag Real Talk. <laughs> Eric, we have a very, um, well, I don't want to ask you to tell them what the topic is because I don't want you to feel peer pressured into it. Oh, there's no pressure. So why don't you let them know what's going on tonight? The obvious statement that he just made is peer pressure. Yes. <laughs> And that is a topic that I know for me specifically has hit me very hard, and I'm sure Eric's dealt with it in some way, shape, or form, <laughs> semblance, <laughs> sentence, period, question mark, quotation. Go ahead, Eric, let's hear your story. Okay, so back in ninth grade, fresh out of eighth grade, going into high school, had this friend since probably sixth grade, had, had offered me, uh, I would say, I don't know the amounts on how weed comes, but it was a very small package of weed and he'd offered, to, he'd offered it to me and I had told him, no, I, I don't really do it or whatever. He told me to smell it, I smelt it, There's, I didn't see any harm in doing that as long as my fingerprints weren't, weren't on it. So, um, he got to the point where he asked me why I don't do it and I just simply told him it's not my nature. And I said, and I have asthma, and he's like, well, it doesn't affect your asthma. I said, it's just the point that it's smoke or whatever like that. And he said, well, it's organic to, you know, smoke a plant or whatever like that. If you just so happen to light it on fire, then, you know, it's not really a drug. And trying to really give me all these technicalities on why I should. And, you know, I, st I stuck to my morals and just said, no. I mean, I'm still, with the I'm still friends with the guy today, but I don't feel the need. To really use that stuff. If you talk to me after 12 or 1 a.m., I pretty much am on it mentally. <laughs> I mean, we can get philosophical or I'm just making a parody out of a song, but that's just me. I would say almost 24-7, just 10 times worse after those hours. So tell me about your mother. That's a Freud thing. A what? Philosophy. We'll talk about Aristotle and some of their beliefs. Oh, yeah? You said you could get philosophical. <laughs> nice. <clears throat> Did the best I could. I tried, but apparently it's not 1 a.m. Wait, what time is it? It's like 5.30, 6, something like that? Yeah, yeah. never mind. So I got to get back. We'll call him back in six or seven yeah. hours. So. Yeah. Of course. Whatever. <laughs> Peer pressure for me has been a really, really shitty journey. And it all started at the young age of 12 years old. My dream was to be a professional wrestler. And... At that age, obviously, there was nothing that I could do. I had to be, well, technically 16, but really 18 if you wanted to travel and be a pro wrestler. So after a couple of years, I kept thinking to myself, I'm like, what can I do to make this dream possible? Or what can I do now that would make it easier to transition? I was like, let me try to be good at something. That might be a good way to start. <laughs> <laughs> and... Um, so I was at the gym one day because I was on the uh, shot put and discus, whatever, track, field, whatever it was, team in eighth grade, and I wanted to get stronger. And so I went to a gym and joined, and the guy who was training me said, you know, kid, you're actually pretty strong. You should think about competing in, like, bench press, squat, powerlifting. And I said, all right, fine, whatever. So we trained for, God, six, seven more months. And then it was the first ever the Hillsborough High School Bench Press Open. Wow. And basically, that was just all high school students competing in bench press, if you couldn't tell from the title. <laughs> anyway, I took first place in that, and then I figured, wow, I, shit, I did pretty good. Let me try again. Maybe if I break state records or I do better, then I could transition that and say, you know, I was a powerlifting champion. This guy could kick your ass in pro wrestling. All right. <laughs> 
see if I can't build that name up. So now I'm at the next one, the state championships. And this one, there's adults, there's kids, there's all ages competing, all sizes. And this is where some of like the real champions were. A lot of and, pressure. Yeah, a lot of pressure. Mm. <laughs> oh, my shoulders, I got it. <clears throat> and so I'm sitting in the backstage after I had com uh, completed, I think, my all of the lifts except deadlift was last. And I only did my first lift. One of the guys comes over and he says to me, you know, kid, you're pretty strong. You have a lot of potential. But, you know, I, you can't be a champion unless you enhance yourself. And I said, what, did you want me to take Viagra or something? <laughs> and he said, no, but you need a performance enhancing drug. He was offering to sell me steroids. And I am 100% dead set against any type of drug. It just bothers me. I always prided myself on every accomplishment in my life being something that I myself did. So that kind of insulted me, but at the same time, I didn't like the fact that he said, if you want to be a champion, you have to do these drugs. But whatever. I turned him down, I went on, I broke the state records that night. What it really started to hurt was when I was in pro wrestling. Because, as you know, that was my dream. And one of the de nights that I was at class, behind the locker room, uh, in the backstage, whatever you want to call it, um, a guy had said to me, one of the guys that I looked up to was a trainer, he said to me, you know, kid, everybody in the WWE and the big companies, there's a look that you have to have, and you, quite frankly, look like an abomination. And that hit pretty hard. I don't find that. <laughs> I really don't find it funny even though it's I'm laughing funny. but what should we call it the look in WWE is this big macho tough power bodybuilder six pack abs up to your jaw and all that shit <laughs> and back then I was 5'9 255 pounds I was a chubby little fat fuck and that was the way about it. so he looked me in the eyes and he said Brandon if you want your dreams to come true you need to use this, and he had a needle in his hand. And that, to me, was absolutely devastating. And I, cause I kinda knew it to be true. Like I feasibly couldn't get in that kind of shape from there. But again, I stuck to my morals and I told him no. Since then, I lost 70 pounds on my own, but I still don't have the look that a WWE guy would have, cause now I'm too small. But I think more importantly, it's a matter of how you feel. I think what really matters is if you feel in your gut right here, I know mine's still a little jello-y, but what are you going to do? What you feel in here and what you feel most importantly in your heart, if that's compromised, don't do it. If you feel that something is wrong with a certain situation that someone's trying to impose on you, don't do it. You don't have, you're not impressing anyone by following the pack. The only way that you're ever going to impress anyone is if you don't do what they're peer pressuring you to do. You stick to your morals and your standards and you go and do that thing. Like the one thing I have to say to all of those people that told me that I would never be a champion in powerlifting unless I used a needle, well, I've been drug tested in contests before and there's proof that I never have taken a single drug, no marijuana, no alcohol, no steroids, no cocaine, no nothing. I went on after that state championship to break world records. I went on to become a two-time Junior Olympic gold medalist. Oh, let me tell you something, in the same night. So guess what? Ha ha, motherfuckers, and guess what? Only like eight people are gonna see that little letting off the chest thing. Of course. And not a single one of them is gonna be the one who actually is trying to sell them to me. Exactly. But you take the road less traveled by, like Mark Twain had said. <clears throat> That's the biggest, I think, statement that anybody could make. You gotta do what you feel is right. Got anything else to add, Eric? Not necessarily. He's pretty much unsaid it all. Okay. <laughs> I done diddly, dag done did. Say it all then. Yeah. So everyone, just to let you know, this, if you couldn't tell, has been another episode of Hashtag Real Talk. I am one of your hosts again, Brandon Ascari. Twitter link is right here. And this is Eric Kelly, but
for my rap name, just follow at the dark notice above my head. Actually, I think the frame might not be above your head, so we'll just move it down and say right here for the dark notice, yeah, Eric right Kelly. Now. And I just want to leave you guys with a parting message before we see you again in two weeks. I'm very sorry to hear if you guys are suffering from PTSD, the path to success disease, but you know it's contagious, so you might as well spread it. Spread it. Hashtag real talk. talk.